Welcome, dear friends, to another episode of Bible Explained. Today we dive into one of the most profound and poignant stories in the Old Testament, Cain and Abel. Nestled in Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 through 15, this passage holds powerful lessons that continue to resonate through the ages. We'll be exploring why God accepted Abel's offering but rejected Cain's, the tragic consequences of jealousy, and the profound question, Am I my brother's keeper? So, let's brace ourselves for a journey into the ancient world and see what wisdom it has to offer our modern lives. Genesis 4 begins right after the banishment of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. The firstborn of humanity, Cain and Abel, occupy the next narrative chapter. They represent the first generation to bear the weight of humanity outside Eden. The passage begins with God speaking directly to Cain, a rare and intimate moment of divine counsel. The words ring out, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? Here, we see a deeply personal God, who is not just a distant creator, but one who engages with his creation on an emotional level. Think about it. God is reaching out to Cain, trying to understand and address his emotional turmoil. How often do we consider the divine as a caring entity, interested in our human emotions? God continues, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well... Sin is crouching at the door, its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. This verse reveals a psychological truth that is as relevant now as it was then. Sin is depicted as a lurking predator, ready to pounce. Here, God offers Cain a choice, a way to master his jealousy and anger before they master him. It's a message echoing through centuries. Self-control and moral decisions are within our grasp. But the story takes a dark turn. Cain's response to God's advice is not recorded, leaving a silence filled with mounting tension. Then in the next verse, Cain speaks to Abel, his brother. Let us go out to the field, Cain says, and with that seemingly innocuous invitation, a tragedy unfolds. The field, an open and uninhabited space, becomes the setting for the world's first act of violence between humans. In a moment of unthinkable rage, Cain kills Abel. It's a heart-wrenching scene that encapsulates the destructive power of unchecked emotions. Here, the Bible captures the raw human experience, a brother's betrayal, the finality of death, and the unfathomable consequences that follow. What's compelling here is the universality of the message. Unchecked feelings can lead to irreversible actions. God then speaks again, but this time with a question that will echo through the annals of ethics and morality. Where is Abel, your brother? Cain's infamous reply, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Reverberates through history. It's a question that challenges our sense of responsibility toward one another. With these words, Cain not only lies, but also distances himself from any sense of moral duty. What follows is even more intense. God says, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. This statement attributes a voice to Abel's blood, symbolizing how wrongdoing cannot remain hidden. It has a witness, the very earth itself. It's a reminder that actions have consequences that transcend our immediate perception. Next, God pronounces a curse on Cain, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain, who tilled the soil, is now cursed by it. His very occupation, the thing that defined his contribution, turns into his greatest burden. Imagine the weight of that, when what you do best turns against you. Cain's response is one of despair. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Here we see Cain's realization of total alienation from the earth, from God, and from humanity. It's a moment filled with pathos and evokes a deeply human fear of isolation and retribution. But there's a twist. God, even in this moment of judgment, shows a surprising measure of grace. He says, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. This divine act of protection over Cain, despite his sin, is deeply thought-provoking. It challenges us to consider the themes of justice and mercy, punishment and protection. 
As we wrap up, think about how this ancient story speaks to us in the modern world. How do we manage our emotions? How do we view our responsibilities toward others? And how do we reconcile the themes of justice and mercy in our own lives? Comment below with your thoughts. What part of the Cain and Abel narrative resonates most with you? What lessons do you draw from it? Tune in next time as we continue our journey through Genesis. Keep those questions coming, stay curious, and until then, peace be with you.